The internet is haunted by brand name gear at improbable prices. Knockoffs, fakes, and gray market. I'll show you what's a killer deal and what just might kill you. Knockoffs are cosmetically close. You'd briefly think this is an AGV Pista GPR, Rossi's 2016 Sole Luna helmet, a $2,000 race rare lid, which would make the 89 bucks I paid a hot deal. But I suspect that's not really Rossi's arm. And this isn't really AGV, it's DGL. So we have a knockoff. It's not strictly claiming to be an AGV, and it's careful to skirt the more monstrous copyright violations. Still, it looks mostly legit. The finish even feels legit. <laughs> Ride through Tavulia at 20, and Rossi himself wouldn't be able to tell which is real. And for less than 100 bucks, I could buy a new one every crash for 20 crashes and still come out ahead. If I come out with a head at all. Visibility is the first demon. The knockoff vents are phantoms. With no holes in the EPS, air has nowhere to flow. One lid creates a constant defogging vortex. The other is a little bit less proficient. There are stranger things yet. My 100% carbon fiber lid weighs 1,550 grams. The cheap plastic is 1485. How thin must the knockoff shell be? Yikes, a proper helmet should not puncture through in a single shot. The visor holds up like a real one though. Well, this is scary. Inside the chin bar, there's nothing. Nothing but plastic behind these cheek pads either. The impact foam found in the real helmet is missing here. Safety first. Turns out this full face only has a half helmet's worth of EPS foam around the crown. But some ghoul was too cheap to mold a solid piece, so we're left with a gash across the top of our heads. across the top of our heads. So this is far from what was once the most protective helmet ever developed for MotoGP. I'm not even mentioning the superficial differences. That the knockoff is decidedly pumpkin shaped, that the hydration and emergency release systems are missing, that the sexy wrappings of Italian lingerie are replaced with your grandpa's boxer shorts. Such large differences are how you spot a knockoff. Expect to get a completely different product with similar paint because no one is really trying to fool anyone. Knockoffs are common for products like the Pista GPR, which is made in Italy from Italian racing DNA. 
They basically have Rossi spit on a sheet of carbon fiber and this is what grows. It's hard to fake that. Fakes. Alpine Star's gloves have been contracted to China, Vietnam. There are a lot of factories that know how to build these, how to build them too well. Our imposter is stitched identically to the real thing. The tagging looks right, the packaging is compelling. Put this on the rack at your local dealership and nine out of 10 customers will drop 200 bucks with zero fear. Only when flayed do I see the villain beneath the skin. Real impact padding is dense, but this knuckle armor is backed with the type of foam that encases Chinese takeout. Only I wouldn't even trust it to protect my lunch, let alone my hands. The real horror story is this leather. It should be overlapped under here and here. The high impact zones get triple abrasion protection on a real A-Star's glove. But it only seems like the fake has done the same until you dissect it and discover two panels stitched together with no overlap. So instead of extra strength, bang on the major impact zone, you get a big failure point. Not that added leather would add much anyway, because that's not leather. It's pleather. I plan to test its durability, but it has none. Once you know this is a fake, you'll probably notice the trick to spotting one. That is, despite smelling like leather thanks to some crafty perfume, real cows aren't this stretchy. But hey, if you have no reason to be suspicious or a $30 reason to hope it's the real thing, well, you'll be fooled. I see fakes all the time. People don't know your gear is nothing. Just stop worrying about me. The gray market. Legitimate products being sold by illegitimate distributors. The American Apparel and Footwear Association finds that 5% of what we manufacture for import disappears in transit. That 5% is our gray market. Case in point, the Dyne Super Speed Textile Jacket. Looks suspiciously like a $500 Dyne Nazy jacket, with the logos and brand names conspicuously, photoshoppingly missing. And when the ghost ship arrives, it is a Dynasty. The thin secrecy of its product page hinted that this would be a gray market item. How is that? Could be one of three ghost stories. First is your classic fell off the truck theft. Let's say Dynasty orders 2,000 units from their factory in Tunisia, but when the boat arrives, 1,950. Huh. A box of 50 jackets must have fallen overboard, sunk somewhere to the cold bottom of the Strait of Sicily. But what if they never made the boat? Maybe the ghost of those jackets crept out the factory back door and straight onto some underpaid worker's hidden eBay account. That could be the story of this jacket, because the high denier fabric abrades like legitimate Duratex, legitimate Dynasty. However, I noticed a few blemishes, and from these I'd guess a second ghoulish tale. Overrun. Let's say Revit wants to import a thousand pairs of pants, then their factory makes a thousand twenty because well, shit happens. The rejects, the leftovers, are rarely permitted to be donated or sold locally. They're supposed to be destroyed. Yet, on the dark corners of Alibaba, we see the ghosts of these overruns popping up for sale, fully intact and much closer to cost. That could be how this slightly damaged Dainese ended up on the gray market. But I noticed another clue. While my own jacket has YKK zippers and branded buttons, this one has generic zippers and no buttons. One last spooky story then. Let's say Alpine Stars has seen a few too many boxes bounce off the truck from Vietnam. Well, maybe they're fed up with the poor road quality around this particular factory. So they revoke the contract and send someone over to confiscate what we call rationed items. Zippers, buttons, labels, reflectives, armor pads, all the stuff A-Stars makes themselves or buys from third parties like 3M or YKK. 
In theory, without rationed items, factories can't make extra gear for backdoor exports. But when you have a bunch of recently unemployed pissed off factory workers and a bunch of half finished jackets, you get gray market Frankensteins, real chassis finished with random trimmings. So gray market goods can be true products, minus waterproof zippers, scotch light reflectives, Kevlar, D3O, and like buying Lucky Charms without the marshmallows, you start to wonder whether that's really a deal. Even scarier, if the trim is off, can I still be sure I have a piece of Dainese gear at all? I see eggs all the time. People don't know they're here. So, knockoffs are sinister, fakes are pure evil, and the gray market does provide amazing deals, but from a distance it's impossible to distinguish one from just another fake. If you like your horror movies with clean endings, know that jacket was a fraud and the armor gave it away. If the plastic has no elasticity and is mounted on low density foam, then it's a trick, not a treat. 